Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our uh, third webinar, uh, one of our webinar session. Uh, the topic today is valuable content, data for quality decision and user engagement. So we have wonderful panelists today. Uh, it's a really interesting topic, and I am happy to introduce you, um, CJ Leonard. She is Vice President and Platform Operation in Iris TV. Uh, so Iris TV, for those who don't know, <clears throat> is a video intelligence company uh, that connects and unifies, unifies video data. Uh, she was working in ad tech and programmatic space for, for a while. And uh, before joining Iris TV, uh, she worked with publishers, broadcasters, and technology vendors. Um, our second speaker is uh, Alexei Shaldenko. He's a co-founder of Vontech. Uh, so OneTech is an uh, AI-based solution for uh, evaluating contact effectiveness. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for joining the panel. I'm sure we'll get some valuable insights from, um, from you today. Uh, and I have all these questions. I'm very, very excited to start discussing it because the topic is definitely hot and uh, people want to get some information on how to uh, proceed with CTV um, how to use context uh, at targeting and etc. So oh, I'd you. like to start. I'd like to um, with the fact that really CTV world is constantly changing. I think the biggest push it has during pandemic, it grew um, dramatically. Now it's keep growing, and I'd say publishers and advertiser are closely monitoring what are those new tools they have to um, improve their ROI, to get bigger engagement of their audience, how to reach the right audience. And then a um, really important part that comes to play that we are about to go um, stepping into really cookie-less era where uh, we get to use contextual advertising as a uh, contextual targeting as a number one tool. So I think this is very um, important step that we have to know no matter what part of the, um, you know, what part of the river we are, uh, depending if you're a publisher or advertiser, content creator, everyone really has to be familiar with what's going on uh, and kind of uh, follow all new trends. So, uh, yeah, like I said, CTV is in high demand. Uh, we got to find the way how to engage our audience, how to attach our customers and actually touch them emotionally, which is really important uh, because CTV gives us an opportunity to be one-on-one -on -one with our viewers. Uh, so I'd like to start with our question number one. It's about behavioral data and how we trans how it's being transformed um, in the marketing and as a CTV channel. So I'd like to uh, talk to CJ first about it uh, regarding the basic strategies, how we can help creators, publishers, and broadcasters to create more relevant experience for audiences, advertisers regarding, regarding contextual advertising. If you can uh, give us a little bit of information about that, I have so many questions for you, uh, but let's start with the basics. Yeah, no, so just to, uh, just to expand a little bit on Iris TV, we are a video data platform. So we enable the connectivity from buy to sell side as far as context, and that's really focused on video context. If you're looking at, you know, there's a lot of players in the space that we work with, Oracle, for example, Grapeshot. You know, they're, they're able to do uh, uh, contextual targeting, but at the page level. What we allow is uh, for advertisers to receive is the information in a, in, a, in a safe and secure way from the publisher side because we're integrating at the asset level. So when we go out and we work with, say, um, you know, a Crackle uh, or other CTV publishers, we're integrating at the CMS level where the assets live. And that's a very delicate relationship. People trust us to do that. Uh, you know, that's the, as, as one company said recently, that's the, the crown jewels. So just as we, how do we, you know, how do we allow, you know, better targeting and so forth in CTV? What happens is we integrate on the CMS side. We normalize all of that wealth of data that publishers have, but really don't feel comfortable exposing at times. 
right? I mean, do I want to give genre? Do I want to give show name? Who am I giving giving it to? Is it out in the RTB bid stream? Things like that, right? All these questions come up. But what we do is we, we, we integrate with the CMS through a feed. We send it out to the data partners. We have 15 plus data partners that we work with it in a litany of capacities, right? Um, where they go out, they will, they'll take the assets and the information that we send, they'll, nor- they'll take it and score it, and then send that information back to us. And then we're able to help facilitate, you know, to, from there, it's facilitating a standard, you know, with the IRIS ID that we have, every asset gets an IRIS ID, all of the data and information that a publisher, uh, from the publisher CMS that's been scored, you know, there's an opportunity for each taxonomy from each data partner to be exposed that way in a secure manner in any part of the supply chain beyond, you know, from the video player out to the DSP to the advertiser's ad server, there's different ways to use that value. So just as we do that, you know, a lot of times in the roles that I've had at, you know, news companies like CBS and NBC, or even at SSPs where you're, you know, trying to expose greater data and signals to the various buying partners so that they can act on it, uh, act on it uh, in such a, a transparent way. That's what we're doing here is to allow transparency across the entire Lumascape uh, with, with the IDs, with the context values that we help enable get passed through, the, through there. So again, I, I, you know, as the cookie goes away on the, on the online video side, as CTV doesn't have the same uh, you know, uh, features as linear buying does, we're providing, you know, depending on the conversation, we're providing that transparency. The IRIS ID can be used and you know, we just, it's been announced that we're doing a deal with LiveRamp. Uh, that ID can be used a, a number of ways around planning and measurement and so forth. So just trying to create transparency in such a way across the content in the space that you just couldn't have before and people are expecting at this point. Yeah, yeah, because essentially, like number one uh, challenge was uh, essentially in CTV, when you start advertising, when you start bringing your content there, like there is really no transparency, right? The advertiser, they don't know exactly where their ad is published and at what point it actually converts. So I think that's where you guys step in and by, by being this intermediate between those content database and uh, whether it's publisher or advertiser, you, you're able to provide that insights and let them target um, and let them access this information in a more efficient way. Correct. And with the level of security and so forth that the publisher would expect, as I said before, it's, you know, there's a, there's a, um, discomfort with exposing a lot of information because not that they don't want to be transparent by any means. It's just that who's going to use it and how, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, that's, that is a, the signals that we help provide uh, allow them to do that and, and be able to negotiate the appropriate rates for their own inventory as they see fit and to the appropriate partners that are able to decode and work with those values. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, with the fact that context, context is back, um, it gives us a lot of opportunities and a lot of opportunities for new company to kind of stand out. But um, as a general statement, would you tell us um, and tell our um, audience today what can be you what can be useful for understanding how to target audiences more effectively? Take into consideration in that we are going we're stepping in into um, our era without cookies. Yeah, I mean, as far as, you know, as cookies go away and there's, there's lacking feature sets in CTV, I think one of the things that, you know, there's several things that these companies bring to the table. Every every company has a quote unquote secret sauce, right? So one company may do more with semantics. Uh, we're going to talk about emotion at some point on this uh, on this call, uh, you know, in addition to brand safety, brand suitability and so forth. And these companies are trusted names in the data industry, right? We're talking about the oracles and the gum gums and the uh, precises and so forth, curves of, of the world. And they each have their their own, whoever, whomever that advertiser trusts or the tactic that they're trying to go after, those partners are scoring that information. And they're saying, hey, look, this is brands. I just talked to a data partner the other day. They have segments for, is this brand safe for kids? Is this brand safe for cubic co-viewing? Is this brand safe for, uh, you know, adults, is, you know, and so forth. And so combining that, you can combine that brand safety aspect with also, you know, comedy is a wide genre. So if you understanding whether or not, you know, you're watching, uh, someone's watching The Hangover or Elf, you know, that's a big deal, right? Where we, we have an example, where, we could, where would you put the Pampers at? Probably going to lean towards something more that's, uh, you know, 
kid friendly and so forth, uh, like a, a movie like Elf, rather than The Hangover. Pamper yeah. tags don't really have, you know, that's not the right place for that. So allowing, you know, it's it's context has been around for a long time. I've been in the news industry for a very long time. It, you know, there's a lot of subjectivity, but you have partners that you can trust that, again, go, another thing I know as we talk to Alexi is around the AI aspect. Uh, these companies have developed these AI engines over, over several years. It, I've seen, you know, five years ago, I saw engines that were, you know, not doing what they were supposed to be doing. And then now it's, the tech is just amazing. You know, fast forward and um, the ability to score, the ability to look at the emotion of the scene and the, uh, you know, the semantics and the the mood and the the logos and celebrities even in, you know, some of this stuff, it's, it's just wild. So I think uh, as we, you know, I don't want to take up the whole floor, but as we, as we do that, as you're an advertiser, you're looking at whether you're, you're coming from linear or you're an online video buyer, you have, you trying to converge onto CTV in some way, shape or form. And the signals that are provided through the enablement by Iris TV, just it's, it's taking context to a whole nother level. Like I said, I, I worked in news, uh, an editor at 8 AM could say that a story was, uh, uh, negative, another person at noon might come back and say it was neutral, right? It's very subjective. But when you start running these same co- pieces of content through these different engines with the with the data partners, and they come back, there's a standard there. It's a third party, uh, you know, it's, it's validated by a third party that you also trust as a publisher and or an advertiser um, in the space. So I think context is back, quote unquote, but it's smarter than ever. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was thinking that another topic that would be really interesting for the content creator at that point, since we're talking about the content contest, a uh, context, um, you know, it's got to be measurement. Uh, yeah, we talk about it. We know it's back. We know it's great. But in a whole reality, what do you think how it would affect, let's say, ROI uh, from the ROI standpoint? Just coming back to RSV, uh you know, look, the, like I said, the transparency, you know, we just had a white paper that we put together with TV Rev and Alan Woke. And I think that's a it's a great read, you know, of just around, you know, what can be done with the, uh, a neutral, transparent identifier that starts start to finish the entire, you know, across the entire supply chain. Right. Measurement, has, you know, I've worked for different companies, linear and, and digital and the measurement, you know, aspect. Everyone says we don't have something for it. We How do we solve this? You know, there's different companies coming out. But really understanding the content at its source and then be able to follow it all the way through the supply chain that allows someone to sit there and say, okay, this, you know, from a measurement standpoint, you know, how many times does someone see that Iris ID, you know, how many times combine that with other data points, like, you know, even audience, like, live, you know, with live ramp, uh, combine these different data points. And that one missing piece, I think though, this whole time has really been, you know, a buy side understanding of the content, I used to get asked for show name and series name just, you know, as a field, you know, we have so much, we're able to unlock such a, a, a deeper signal than just, just a show name and so forth that, um, you know, people can plan differently as they start unlocking these tools, being able to plan and measure differently because of that, that missing piece being, being the, the, the actual content in CTV. I think that's the game changer here. Linear, you know, you have copy, you have logs, you have programming, you, you know where it's right. running. There's a, there's a, you can run an air check, right? These are tried and true 80 plus hundred year old, you know, pr- practices, obviously innovated upon, but, you know, these concepts are now uh, capable of being done in a more intelligent way with CTV. People talk about the wild, wild west. Well, we're, we're here to plumb everything so that you can have an understanding and in transparency to be able to do that measurement aspect or the planning piece, in addition to targeting of, of multiple uh, facets. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much, CJ. Uh, I think it's really, really good insights. Uh, I wanted to pass uh, to pass it to Alexi um, and ask him what what kind of input he has regarding you know, behavioral data and transformation, uh, specifically in CTV space, based on your experience and your project in, uh, in World Act. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for uh, like inviting me. Well, uh, in terms of um, oh, 
like uh, analyzing our behavior data. We have, uh, for example, B is wanting to be provide insights to streaming services, um, um, video production companies, even uh, bloggers uh, in, uh, in terms of how to improve the content. And what, uh, or if, or for example, when the companies uh, have intent to buy, uh, we help them to analyze the audience, uh, build the portrait and uh, improve the uh, array in terms of, uh, for example, if they have A-B testing, if we have amazing case uh, when we have two uh, same like we we'll say uh, promotion materials and we test it on the US audience and uh, we underst understood and analyze how the audience behave what the uh, triggers uh, emotional triggers uh, work and based on that uh, for example conversion rate for the uh, different types of platforms uh, um, increased for 20 percent based on just only a uh, small uh, test of emotions like uh, analyzing emotions so uh, what, how we work? Uh, so basically we analyze um, um, a lot of engagement, attention, eye focusing based uh, on the like a stimul a visual stimul. Uh, we create a platform that uh, um, allow, uh, um, like allow our clients to conduct studies uh, in different countries and uh, compare the results also based on different types of uh, dem uh, demographic parameters. So in terms of um, providing insights, it's very important uh, to understand your target audience it's, uh, and what the platform it is. Uh, so basically after that, we what we uh, um, like advice um, to analyze what parameters uh, you plan to use for the targeting and what uh, the your uh, like uh, the goal is uh, how, like um, um, increase the engagement uh, analyze what the types of advertising that you need to uh, like work with because for example as you mentioned in, in terms of the context uh, you are it's very important to not to uh, give uh, the advertisement um, drop the attention from the content also and when we talk about um, when you can't control which uh, um, advertisement which commercial can be on the uh, like uh, the process of the showing the content uh, it's very hard for example to analyze and um, it's important uh, to, that your content uh, works for the engagement and also retention. So what we do, we analyze uh, all the parameters and we uh, provide recommendations how to improve the content in terms of editing uh, and also promotional uh, parameters for the like uh, different types of platforms. Uh, uh, maybe I can also discuss how it is like done before and compare what uh, AI can uh, bring to the table. Yeah, that would be that would be great. Uh, so before, as a, I'm sure that all the pro uh, producers and uh, distributors, uh, they uh, used, uh, for example, um, online surveys. Yes, uh, it can be also focus groups, but there is a lot of disadvantages. And now with uh, like last ten uh, last ten years, it's all about AI, and it, it goes so well. So uh, this um, I'm also a professor at university, and uh, I teach uh, all the AI stuff, the software engineering. And, uh, you know, it's so cool when you see how it's changing, uh, how the world changed, uh, and in terms of AI. Uh, now, what um, is the easiest way to uh, set up the study is uh, show it uh, to your audience and grab all the insights. And for this, so uh, um, like as we and other we have uh, other companies that uh, produce the uh, like test the content. Uh, the easiest way to uh, upload the content and just give it uh, to your audience. Uh, based on these insights, you can do uh, all the improvements. You can analyze what they need to change in terms of marketing strategy or content strategy. And because uh, it's all about engagement and uh, retention to the platform or to, uh, you, uh, to your audiences and viewers, uh, it's very important to build this emotional connection between your product uh, and audience, between uh, your content and even advertisement. So um, it's now uh, very important to um, see how we you can analyze it and what the uh, improvements can be in terms of uh, the easiest way, the cheapest way, the fastest way, uh, because it's all about uh, money now and uh, all the terms. Mm -hmm, Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned you mentioned emo uh, you mentioned emotion parts. Yeah. So the data uh, of emotions, 
how it can help creators or advertisers uh, to maximize their content efficiency? Well, um, in terms of when uh, it's, so it, it, I, will say, I will start from the attention. Uh, intention spam is so uh, small now, and you, um, your, uh, each type of content should involve uh, emotions. Uh, so well, when you have the, um, uh, call, uh, like um, all the uh, call in to action messages, all the uh, empathy between uh, audience and character, I will show you if you don't mind later this small uh, piece of uh, case uh, where we are, for example, um, our creators, um, like you have a commercial for 40 seconds, for example, but uh, all their um, like products, logo or product uh, were put uh, in the highest peak of uh, emotional engagement. It, this way, these techniques uh, well, is kind of NLP, I would say also, but <laughs> these techniques uh, uh, build this strong emotional connection. So in the highest peak, you, saw, uh, you see this product. So it's uh, 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 for like, for example, for uh, one or two times, this was uh, done for four times. So you are happy. You, uh, you, um, have this association between the product company and emotion. Uh, and also it's very important, for example, um, if you talk about long form of video content, also, for example, we provide also this analysis into, uh, using storytelling techniques. Uh, in long form, for example, they have X structure, uh, we analyze in, uh, in level of engagement, in turning points, how, uh, in clean head, uh, clean head, Fingers. So it's very important to understand, for example, build this. Uh, um, you, um, you know, uh, the, um, the engagement is a flow, and you uh, sometimes you need to give your audience relax and uh, without, but after that, you need to, using this, all the uh, storytelling uh, techniques, uh, engage them to the content. But, for example, if you talk about uh, 40 minutes, it's very really hard to um, um, engage all the time. You need this uh, extract or uh, have this uh, extractor. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to, uh, we call it cognitive load. Uh, and uh, it's very important to, you know, uh, play with it and to analyze how uh, your audience react on different uh, types of uh, stimulus. Uh, for example, analyze what the motivators uh, they have. Uh, if you uh, we talk about characters, and sometimes it's also in terms of the content uh, uh, and advertisement, uh, you have these uh, uh, characters that uh, you, you have empathized. So uh, you, uh, you, uh, you have to have, um, like build this connection between uh, char characteristic of the uh, character and you as a view, uh, like audience. So mm -hmm. it's uh, very important to test it and improve. For example, we have, uh, uh, you know, it's, if you talk about long form of, of, for different types of the clients and um, it's all about investments, time, money, ideas. Uh, and for example, interesting case, uh, we can test it uh, on different uh, stages. And the most, uh, I would say, important and uh, way it's this on the development phase. When you already uh, film anything, you have just ideas and uh, evaluate uh, these um, thoughts, ideas, um, concepts uh, before like you started working on that. And for example, we have an uh, interesting case from the Australian broadcaster when they want to just uh, test one issue, diversity. Mm -hmm. And uh, they produce content uh, of an Australian market, but they have issue with, for example, um, US and UK. So they, for them, it's very important to test uh, different types uh, of uh, um, ideas and understand the engagement. Do they have any diversity issue and uh, save money? And it's all. Uh, it can be tested not only when the uh, content is filmed. It can be tested also when it's uh, when doing like development phase. So it's all about building emotional connection uh, mm -hmm. between uh, customer, viewer, and the uh, content itself. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very. It's very interesting. Yeah, I like that. You're almost using uh, NLP techniques to kind of get into the right moment at the show or um, you know a movie for your customer. It's yeah. It's very. Uh, it's, it's very good idea. It's very good idea to, to almost like associate those emotions with that certain ad. 
Uh, CJ, do you guys have anything um, where you study emotions or anything where you would apply some type of artificial intelligence um, in terms of your context targeting options? So we, as an enablement platform, we enable those data partners that will do that. So offhand, uh, like GumGum and uh, Precise, I believe there's a couple of partners that we work with that that is a specialty that they have. So if you're an advertiser, you may you may have a couple of different tactics uh, that you want to try to execute. And on the publisher side, you're not really looking to do you know dozens of integrations, right? With each data uh, with the, each data partner, you could in theory do all of that. But what we enable is not to keep using that word, but it really is it embodies what we do. We enable these partners to receive the data that that you know they would have had to build out multiple integrations to do. We we allow them to receive the data in a normalized manner, kind of like a, you know, almost like its own currency or standard, right? And then they're able to run those types of analyses um, depending on their, you know, GumGum has a Verity product, uh, you know, uh, uh, Silver Bullets out there, Precise, Aluma, they're all, the, all these different companies are looking at these different angles and, and doing that themselves. So um, I can't say that we do that directly, but our data partners definitely are. And that's definitely a feature set, you know, uh, a feature that, you know, as they're going out and touting their data through the IRIS enablement platform, uh, you know, what's what they're bringing up. Mm -hmm. I also, uh, I was interested to, to hear your insight and your feedback, uh, CJ, as well, our question for you. Uh, generally, how would you explain the value of context in CTV? Since it's a pretty hot topic at this point. Yeah, no, I mean, going back to what we were talking about before, the, val the physical value of it is, you know, aside from, you know, audience targeting and, and cookies and so forth, uh, you know, the, the certain things not happen, you know, being available in CTV anyway. Um, I think, you know, it's something that, you know, just coming from large broadcasters, it's something that can be done, you know, albeit manually, there's some AI behind it now with some of the systems and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, but the the value is just, is, you know, unlocking the ability to see what, you know, is in that stream or is in that, you know, it's not just VOD, right? When you start looking at CTV, you've got different categories as well, right? So it's, you know, did I watch a, an episode of, you know, someday when Netflix has ads, uh, you know, did I watch an episode of Stranger Things this weekend? And, you know, um, you know, what, what did that pass to the advertisers and so forth? And unlocking, you know, what I was watching versus, oh, I just bought Netflix or I just bought Crackle or I just bought, you know, you know, I, I did a you know hundred thousand impression deal on you know through an SSP, and uh, you know I don't know where it ran. It could have run on Sling in in live linear. It could have run on Crackle and a VOD piece of VOD content. You know, there's there's more signals out there with genre and so forth. But again, it doesn't get you pinpoint you down. The context aspect aspect of this pins pinpoints you more and more to what the physical viewing experience was for the user. Um, and what again, right, right, we always say right ad, right time, right, right emotion, right, uh, right state of mind, I should say. Um, you know, if you're watching an episode of This Is Us, it's a great idea to drop a Kleenex ad after a really sad, you know, <laughs> section of that. Right. That was, and I, I, I have to, that's I'm quoting Linda Yaccarino from a few years ago um, at an event, but, uh, you know, dropping that Kleenex ad in the right place is, is really, um, you know, there, there's a time and place for that, right? I brought the Pampers ad up before, you know, um, you know, even kids toys in the middle of reverse kids toys in the middle of the hangover, you know, sure. Parents are watching, but is that really the, the time to do that? Right. So I think the, the, going back to the value it's, it's, we talk about auto intenders, right? That's audience targeting and auto intenders. Obviously there's a you know great deal around that. We're looking to complement, you know, auto intender, you know, targeting perhaps, but it really, you know, if you're get, catching someone when they're watching, uh, what is it, Top Gear, you know, or they're watching NASCAR, you know, it's a di it's different, um, you know, than sitting there and saying, oh, well, here's a lookalike model. We think these people are, are um, you know, potentially watching this. They fall into this cookie pool or this made pool, whatever it is, right? Uh, we're, we're actually showing folks what the act, you know, able to uh, show folks what the actual content was. And then the data part through the data partners, obviously, and then even further, what what was going on in that content, right? Was uh, I'm I'm in Philadelphia, so was Charles Barkley on that night, you know, post game show for the finals, that type of thing. You know, there's there's celebrity, you know, information there. There's um, was it sad? Was it you know thought provoking? You know, things like that are also uh, words and phrases in the in the taxonomy. So um, it just it just 
you know, where it can be used with audience, fantastic, you know, to, to augment things, um, you know, auto attenders watching auto content. You start getting into very niche areas as well, though. You know, you start targeting down, you get five people in Boise, Idaho that want to buy a car. You, you know, that's a, you know, you have to be careful with some of these tools. But at the same time, you know what those five users are, you know, watching Top Gear in Boise, Idaho. So um, just going back to your the original question, just the value. It's, it's something that in CTV has really been lacking the, the connections, you know, I make, you know, a now, poor analogy of running RCA VCR cables across the football field. You know, we're trying to plumb the entire, the entire industry, but it's really only red, yellow, and white. And, but they, they, you know, these signals, these, these wires have been missing all this time in this articulate, more scalable uh, fashion. Yeah. Because essentially like very, very basic targeting that we've been, you know, kind of learning and, um, really using for a while it's just okay let's target by the category let's target by the show let's target by uh you know something really basic it's something something very visible because here you have to apply some type of uh research uh ai to find out where is the right spot to actually put that specific ad and, and one thing i one thing yeah. i will add on to that look we're not trying to you know uh we're trying to complement a publisher's data. They, they should, you know, we're not saying don't pass genre or show. We're not saying don't pass these things. But what we're saying is, you know, I, and again, coming from news organizations where, you know, you could have a hundred meta tags from one person and five from another, and they'd be very different, right? Very subjective. You still, there's still relevance, you know, in your team that is, uh, you know, categorizing all this. And you still need that, that data internally. But what we do is we enhance all of that, you know, you know, exponentially by saying, look, based on all the data that you have in your system and the asset URL that a publisher, or sorry, that a data partner can, can score and look at, uh, we can then take it to a whole nother level with, through third party verified data and segments and, and a litany of other you know, types of uh, ways to implement that. So um, just, I wanted to bring up the third party piece. We, we are not here to negate what's going on. In fact, we, you know, a lot of that we, we need out of the system. Continue to do that. Please don't, you know, you have your own internal speak, but when you want to talk to, you know, 25 of the top DSPs in one, in one manner, and maybe you're not, you know, Warner or, you know, some of these other larger companies, um, even those companies, there's so much value in it. Having been at multiple of the large companies myself, there's so much value in just being able to say it's one pipe integrate it. I get all my data partners. I get all, you know, they, it's one trusted partner that's able to facilitate so much uh, uh, of the data passing and the security aspect. Um, I think that's, you know, regardless of your, if you're at the top of the list or right, you're, you're in the long tail, we bring value to every part of that, uh, every part of that uh, uh, category or section of publisher. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of, uh, well, larger large chunk of our audience is actually content creators as well. So at that point, they would probably be publishers, right? Uh, because their content would be used to place somebody's ads. So um, what would be your recommendation or heads up for those publishers in terms of, uh, you know, we, yes, we are going to be using contextual targeting and this is safe for you and this is good for you. Why would you say so for them, right? For those for the, for the publisher side of the business, if we talk about CTV? I think, I mean, as you're, you know, this is, a, this, depending on where, you know, the publishers, content creators are coming from, there's a lot of um, overhead and understanding, even having enough spatial awareness to know that you have to understand context, right? And so, you know, context has been, you know, they say context is king and uh, and so forth, or they say content is king, I should say, uh, but, you know, context of that content is queen, right? <laughs> so I think one of the things there is like, you know, just going back to, you know, Lexi's point about being able to look at these different sections and the AI aspects, I think um, for anyone, you know, I don't want to, uh, I don't take up too much time, but we also have a recommendations business that this all started out of. And by and that, that business is what allowed us to pivot into context, because we had to understand the content to be able to recommend content, right? And so if you're a content creator, there's, you know, we talk about money ball for video here. Uh, if you're a content creator, to Alexi's point, you know, this is a general statement, uh, but if you understand your content and you understand what, what companies want to buy or what they think they want to buy because they're just getting into this at scale on the context side, right? 
um, that auto example, right? Maybe, maybe, uh, you know, let's just use an example. I have a publisher that, you know, is using us for both uh, recommendations and for the context product. So they're able to see what are the advertisers uh, buying, right? We're building out from feature sets to be able to expose that to them, right? Uh, what are the advertisers buying? Great. Okay. Well, you don't want to influence the news cycles in certain aspects, but if you're a content creator, oh, there's a lot of auto content. There's a lot of, you know, uh, um, oh, what's the other one we just said? Uh, certain types of sports content. We just had someone target uh, Kevin Hart, you know? There's, you know, you have these different signals and you, and you combine these different signals, you become a pretty, pretty strong yield management uh, feature set for a publisher content creator that's out there trying to figure out, well, do I want to go shoot this neighborhood piece on the park or do I want to go, and I'm just making stuff up, or do I want to go and shoot about the, you know, the, the car issues on Roosevelt Boulevard in Philadelphia, right? Like the traffic issues, it just helps whether you're, uh, and again, we're focused on open web and we're focused on, you know, a lot of areas around that, uh, or mo mostly that, um, but, you know, it's the same concepts, even if you're, you know, if you're an influencer in some way, shape, or form, and you want to do open web, understanding what content works and what doesn't, what's getting bought, you know, you have a big enough presence. That's a, you know, that's a huge win on both sides of your editorial. I shouldn't say editorial, but on your content creation and your 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 advertising sides of the house. Yeah. So it's basically like identifying the demand. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you. Yeah, and then create. Right. Yeah. So you know, if it's if there's demand for again, you don't want to you know. You know, pay to play type stuff, but like if you're if you're noticing, hey, there's a strong, you know, you know, a lot of advertisers are looking for this type of content. You could, you know, potentially go and and optimize towards that. So, yeah, yeah, less, that makes sense. yeah, and I'll toss that back to Alexia. You and it's also that. it's also kind of uh, like trends uh, trends analysis because it's also mm -hmm. it's a way to see uh, uh, combine all this data helps uh, like create some more engaging content also. And it's a win-win strategy for both uh, like advertisers and content creators, part publishers. Mm -hmm. uh, Alexi, another question. So generally, would you dive? Uh, could you please dive deeper into the? Um, you know, what is the what is the market for uh, AI emotion recognition platform? Oh, and sure. what are these roles? What are these roles in CTV? Well, uh, in terms of AI now is growing, and we have uh, like um, uh, trends like uh, analyze emotion recognition. We have, of course, uh, different types of uh, yeah, like um, uh, of signals of uh, for emotion recognition. Of course, we have uh, uh, text, you can uh, uh, speech, and also video. Yes, uh, signals. So based on different types of, uh, for example, uh, great. Uh, case for um, emotion, uh, like tone of voice, I would say, and all emotion stuff in terms of text is Grammarly. For example, they um, analyze um, your text on, uh, on emails and help you to rewrite uh, and analyze tone of voice and help to present like uh, your um, email, your text in the better way. And so it's one of the also emotion recognition uh, with uh, sens uh, sensitive um, sentiment data. Also uh, in terms of voice, uh, it's uh, you, you, we know uh, we all know about Clubhouse. I think it's an amazing data set for all that uh, have uh, to analyze how these uh, people uh, speak uh, mm -hmm. or the uh, all these discussions, etc. So uh, and the next step uh, also is uh, video. Yes, so because we have uh, from the text is binary. From after that you go to the another dimension and video. Uh, it's uh, this combination of uh, audio and also it's, uh, like all this uh, speech to text uh, stuff. Um, there is plenty, uh, um, I would say, opportunities for different uh, like uh, all the real values to the business because um, in, in terms of if people talk about voice, it's call centers uh, when you need to analyze all the um, uh, intent and emotion. Uh, um, of the customer, for example, what we are doing uh, for analyzing um, engagement and emotional reactions, we have this uh, um, like input as a video, and we have stimuli that invoke emotion. Uh, and for us, it's very uh, important to understand, uh, analyze this connection between reaction and emotional state uh, of the because we analyze like not just this, uh, you know analysis for on the image. 
Just mm-hmm. we have this uh, very, uh, flow of reactions. That's why uh, these markets, uh, I would say that uh, it's uh, estimation for this market more than uh, 20 uh, billion dollars uh, in uh, 2025. And for, of course, it, uh, they have the segmentation for different types of uh, I would say uh, markets, uh, as I mentioned, for tax, uh, uh, emotion, customer uh, experience, uh, for also, for example, uh, user experience, uh, gaming, uh, gambling. Also, they are trying now to do uh, a lot of uh, emotion recognition just to involve people. And um, it's all about uh, customers now. So uh, basically, um, yeah, there is uh, a lot of niches where uh, they can be AI be applied, and mm-hmm. also machine learning. Uh, there's uh, now, for example, Google, Microsoft. They um, um, produce uh, because they um, they like um, open a lot of uh, um, neural networks, pre-trained neural networks that can uh, also like companies to train their own. Uh, models and uh, yeah, like increase accuracy and bring new products to the market. So it all depends uh, on their uh, like business requests. All the uh, other, for example, we have also different cases when um, products that um, the main goal is invoke emotion, they need to test it. And the content, it's all about emotions. Uh, and uh, also, uh, for example, what we do in our company, we have done a lot of research. Uh, we do our research with helmets, uh, medical equipment, and also psychology, like the very interesting concept of escapism. Yeah, when you try to, when you, your main goal to, uh, uh, when you uh, try to watch or uh, decide to watch the content, it's uh, escape. And it's very important sometimes to analyze what's your emotional states. Uh, um, based on what the, uh, provokes you to do that, what they motivate, uh, watch this content. And together, all the data uh, can bring uh, to the publishers, uh, to the streamers, uh, to the um, different types of companies that uh, aggregate the content, um, like uh, boards, um, like uh, changing the uh, TV channels. So there's a lot of in, you know, Amount, so many like amount of data that can be analyzed. And if you talk about data, big data, it's all about AI. Uh, you can't uh, find insights without uh, crossing all the parameters. It's all about big data, AI, machine learning. Um, so um, it's, um, I would say that we are the uh, time when uh, data can tell about us more then can be uh, like uh, thinking about ourselves and also yeah. uh, and um, scary. Think, it's scary but it's new reality it's yeah. new normal it's uh, it's uh, in us it's very important to uh, analyze uh, prepare ourselves so what insights we can reach and sometimes uh, you know I, I'm not sure that uh, sometimes when we talk about uh, speech uh, like uh, um, analysis uh, and I, I some like uh, say something, and of that I have these uh, advertisements uh, about. So they listen to us. So right. <laughs> conspiracy, but uh, it's all about also which emotions uh, uh, in what context uh, after what I have done uh, using my application. Uh, so there's uh, it's all about uh, data analysis, and for, I think that um, that uh, we are working on during like post uh, when the content is released yes or uh, before the release uh, we can uh, for example improve uh, that we can gather that we for example we do uh, we have this uh, case of research of uh, audience uh, portrait so we uh, mm-hmm. analyze the motivators the fears uh, we analyze what uh, um, characteristics how they describe themselves the and based on that we provide uh, content creators with all these parameters uh, they uh, if they use this data, they uh, will hit the audience in the right point. So uh, mm-hmm. this is what we can do, for example, on development phase. But after that, when uh, platforms collect the data, they can uh, hit uh, based on this data audience. So it's all about. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's like it's like uh, basically the more precise your targeting is. Speaking from the standpoint of being a user, I actually enjoy having targeted ads. Like as if they listen to me or if they caught my attention in any other shape or form. But if I see targeted ads, I'm like great job. I actually want to buy it. It's a perfect time, perfect state of mind. And I think the more you kind of dive deep into this, um, people just don't even think about it as annoying ads anymore. It's changed like the whole ecosystem, whole uh, approach to the advertising business. And I think CTV is a perfect space uh, to implement it because it's growing so fast and there is so much more to come, I would say. Uh-huh. And and may, just... may, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, 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 but uh, and uh, you mentioned that I'm so irritated when uh, they uh, try to hit me with the wrong ad. So I, mm-hmm. it's better, please, uh, like, target me with the uh, right ads that I need you know, than, uh, like, um, you, uh, like, uh, like uh, just grab my attention to the stuff I don't need. So it's also in person. Yeah. yeah. And just one thing about contextual, I'll just say that. In our model, we are one of the reasons we were born. Uh, this whole context conversation came up was that we were working in the recommendations world, and you know we were generating views for for companies that couldn't monetize it after GDPR because you know a lot of the you know they could only do certain things obviously around targeting and so forth that it couldn't be related to you know uh, if they had opted out, what do you do? Because of that pivot. Uh, you know, we don't use, we're only using the content content to create the, the context segments, you know, us with our partners. Uh, and that's not using, you know, PII, uh, personal identifiable information. So you're not talking in the, in our, in our stack, there's not a conversation around IP or, you know, user IDs and so forth. Now our partners may have that as their first party data, but us in and of ourselves are just focused on what is that asset? What is, you know, the relevant information that's associated say, associated with it? And that there's so much to unlock just in that. You're not worried about auto and tenders and, you know, did their IP hit for this or, you know, are they, are they cookie by X, Y, and Z and, and, and so forth. We're just looking at that asset and going, was well, that auto content or not? So you're not, the privacy aspect is, is thoroughly maintained here, at least through the iris uh, lens. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't even, they don't even interfere with PII information. They just strictly goes off, uh, I don't know, like uh, looking into small details of, of what a user actually are doing there on the back end without interfering with any personal data. I think this is this is what and it can complement personal data. You know, it can complement audience yeah. data. But again, in and of itself, that you know, the the creepy factor that some people talk about, like that's um, you know, as folks look to transform that. You know, there's, there's still going to be some sort of audience data. It'll just be first party. There'll be other, it'll transform itself, clean rooms, whole nother space we can do an session on. But in and of itself, at least for through Iris, there is there directly, there's not a, uh, there's not a, a concern. We, we, we generally pass through any sort of, uh, you know, uh, we get surveys all the time of, you know, what mm-hmm. the first question is, do you handle, are you a processor? Are you, a, you know, it's, it's so forth of, of personal data. We're not. It's it's just simply what's on the asset, and it's going out with the bid stream when it get, gets called. So, um, just a clarification there, because I think that I find that's one of the exciting things. I think is we people are navigating very troubled waters elsewhere with the cookie conversation, and we are. I feel like we're in a in a really great place um, because of our focus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. I agree, hundred um, percent. I wanted to move to uh, the third part of our discussion today. It's going over the tools and strategies for channel promotion. Again, uh, from the part prospect of you know for the content owners, as this is our major audience today. And uh, Alexei, I would like to pass it to you. Um, if you could please share the case study uh that you face with your company uh and then uh, cj i would ask you to do the same uh and i think that would be a great wrap up to our webinar and uh, a great takeaway for uh everyone who's watching sure sure uh well uh, we have prepared for this uh our webinar piece uh, that um, because all the data that we of course uh, track uh, analyze is uh 
uh, on their confidential. Um, but uh, now what I want to uh, tell you in terms of, for example, content creation and how we analyze. Uh, so main idea is, um, I repeat, it's uh, evaluate the content effectiveness. And uh, what we analyzed, for example, it was a video for, um, uh, as a blogger, so to say, um, we analyzed the, how audience react before we launch it. Uh, so we gather like uh, 200 uh, participants. Uh, it was, uh, we have this dem all the demographic parameters. We uh, also want their um, uh, like uh, requests was uh, they this audience will be interested in business topic, mm -hmm. and uh, we have this uh, range of uh, parameters that um, for the age, uh, gender, and uh, for example, frequency of uh, watching. So we analyze video, we, um, our main parameters, it's all about intention engagement. We also see uh, in our algorithms, we have this uh, combination of parameters that can forecast uh, um, deep view. And also, of course, we, um, it's all about sharing. And we analyze uh, MPS and promoter score that help us out on that. So for example, uh, basically, we, um, when we test uh, uh, all the content, we do it uh, with comparison of competitors or maybe other benchmarks that help us to uh, understand what the level of pump is, is uh, okay for uh, like this uh, type of co content. Um, basically, when we talk about AI, uh, we analyze uh, different parameters. Uh, it's uh, engagement, uh, eye focusing, attention. We analyze uh, spectrum of emotions. Uh, so it's all about mimics. It's all about uh, body pose. Uh, and for clients, we have these uh, metrics such as engagement, uh, positive, negative emotions, and inconsistency. So basically, uh, it's enough to make uh, insights and uh, for example when we have a uh, video what we do we automatically uh, divide it by scenes we understand what um, um, in what uh, like um, timestamp we have uh, different types of uh, uh, for example, indicators of the engagement, positive, negative emotions. And in this video, we have three blocks. It was, uh, it wasn't interrupted by advertisement. It was uh, advertisement was um, uh, integrated in this video. And, but there is well, so many scenes with, uh, that um, invoke these uh, negative reactions as uh, uh, this all the uh, scene started with uh, mm -hmm. advertising. And uh, for us, uh, because uh, it's a microparameter that can uh, realize uh, what sort of jokes or what uh, stimulus working or what the context of the scene. Unfortunately, we can uh, control this information here, but uh, when we go to the demographics and other parameters, we, for example, we provide this uh, segmentation by age and gender. And mm -hmm. we can see the specific for each scene, uh, which uh, scene work, uh, which not. Uh, and for that, we, we see that, for example, uh, all the strong um, like, uh, uh, negative emotions uh, in those, uh, for audience uh, 35, uh, 44, for example, and basically it's uh, women. So they, if we also can analyze this segmentation, uh, we can, um, what well, our recommendations here were uh, to change some topics, change some uh, in editing scenes. And after that, for example, uh, if, for example, uh, here we have uh, forecast for 44% for of the depth view. After that, it was increased for uh, 64. Mm -hmm. And based on this, uh, uh, for example, changing of the structure of the video, we help to engage the audience and uh, uh, provide like uh, that engagement not falling, for example. And also what we do, we analyze, uh, because we have this... Uh, uh, covers, for example, we analyze uh, what the view net, what the order of elements perception, do we have any gaps, for example, uh, do the, all the elements structured, and for example, if we are talking about YouTube, you know, this all the covers, uh, the, it's uh, they um, compete between each other, so it, it should be engaged, you have this uh, uh, span for, you know, or time for decision for at least three seconds. Seconds, so uh, it uh, takes okay. I like it, so it's engagement or not. And another one, what I want to discuss, um, we uh, analyze very interesting information. I mentioned it uh, during this uh, 
example, we, uh, talk um, that, um, for example, we have advertisement and we put uh, logo yeah, and uh, product uh, in the right position, in the right thing for engagement. For example, here we analyze uh, 400 uh, people. Uh, it was in the US and uh, we have this level of engagement uh, of the, for different uh, scenes. And we're interested in that uh, this blue or dark blue, I would say, uh, seeing this uh, bars, uh, it's where we, we put it uh, product. So it's logo or um, uh, mm -hmm. like car. And we see that all this we put it in the place with uh, uh, engagement uh, uh, rows is growing and is the right way. So uh, here creators created this. Um, they created emotional uh, connection between the uh, video, between the character and the product. It's all mm -hmm. against itself. So, and also, we, of course, we can analyze uh, everything they are looking at. Do they have pay attention to their character, logo, and what the uh, order of perception? So it's uh, uh, the way, for example, also we have this um, way how the people look at uh, different types of uh, content uh, of the um, uh, like objects and it's very important as you can see we have these uh, squares here uh, and it's very important that uh, you um, like um, flow and um, um, all the your eyes is uh, going from the uh, square to square in the smooth way so you are not interrupted, um, you are not uh, distracted by elements that are uh, no, uh, not in the right place. So it, help also help, uh, it also helps to engage the audience and um, uh, increase the engagement. This is uh, on my side for you today. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, that's been really helpful. I really like uh, how you broke it down, especially by the eye perception and by those emotional moments and the actual video. Um, yeah, thank you. It's a great, really, really great visual. ICJ, regarding uh, regarding uh, Iris TV, if you can share uh, a case study, maybe something about uh, maybe you know, based on your opinion, what new marketing channels should content creators uh, add to their marketing strategy if you have anything to add to this uh, based on your experience and maybe you have an example that you can share with us that would be really helpful too. No, I think, you know, first things first, you know, reach out if there's any questions, you know, open door type situation because there's a lot of different facets that we're, you know, while we're not um, we're hyper focused on content creators and, and, and publishers. It's in a slightly different manner. So um, I do want to share this slide for those. You know, I, I talk about enablement. I don't know if you guys um, uh, just you know we're we're taking that data that a uh, that a creator is entering into their system. You know, they say garbage in, garbage out, right? So <laughs> as far as um, what you're putting in there, that's a huge deal. Like that's, you know, it's something that I think gets overlooked at times, at least coming from other organizations and, you know, the quality of the data that you put in at the time of when you're uploading it and so forth, um, you know, that, that does matter for either to yourself or, or down the line to others that are looking at it. So I just, as you, like I said um, before, you know, there's a couple of different aspects. We could talk about how we can help drive CPMs with you. You know, if you're, if you're, you know, have a sales team and so forth, that's out selling your content. If you're a smaller house and you're, you know, working with uh, supply side platforms and they're out representing your inventory. Again, we could, you know, probably talking about, you know, uh, from a uh, creator's standpoint, you know, how do you open up additional signals uh, outside of just your basic genre and so forth. Um, that's really where we're going to, we would come in and we would have those, um, uh, third party, third party data partners validate, but basically just to, just to recap for those, uh, you know, the content creators on the publisher side, um, you know, we're taking your, your asset and we're taking your, um, your unstructured data. You say series name, someone else says show name. It, we get it to one standard for those data partners to be able to act on it. It's not sexy work, but it's got to be done if we're going to do that this all at scale together. We normalize it. We connect it to those data partners. You know, it's you're getting a variety of information back from these data partners as to what's on, what your content really scores as. You know, uh, there's been times where you know more than once we've seen surprises on brand safety and so forth. You know, that's and and um, 
you have different partners that can sit there and tell you, you know, it's, it's a highly, highly brand safe. And, it's, you know, they're seeing it as that and people can target that. Um, and then obviously just the activation layer. If you're working in an ad server, um, a lot of this is going to be old hat. If it's, if it's, if you're not working in an ad server day to day, if you're focused on the content, you know, your ad ops team or your outsourced ad ops team or someone who's helping you run ads, I think, you know, it's really understand the content and then get it as fast as you can out into the, uh, supply chain, the ad supply chain. So then that way, um, you know, it can be activated upon, you know, it can be bought, um, in ways that and you're getting pigeonholed. I know a lot of news outlets get pigeonholed. You know, I don't want this news outlet because it's news. Well, there's a lot of great content out there. And if you find out that you're getting blocked by, you know, different DSPs because they saw a few things before. And, you know, the, the, this is, again, my background is news. So as we close this out, uh, I one of my big, you know, com- hits the heart. I ran news ad ops teams for years. And, you know, the ability, we would just get blocked. And the ability to unlock, you know, to, to unlock content that is, you know, great, you know, uh, it's evergreen, it's brand safe, it's timely, but it's not, you know, the, the news cycle right now is atrocious. And so, you know, to have someone just say block that entire property, we, we're, you know, we create that, um, we, we provide that transparency. So not everything has to get blocked. It's not one big sweeping block list that puts every news outlet in the world on it. You, you can go in and you can, you can look at, you know, what is safe there and so forth. So that's, uh, I'll leave it at that though. Mm-hmm. And I guess my last question would be just to you know wrap up and summarize. Why do you consider CTV uh, is as essential marketing channel right now? I, speaking for myself, we came from a linear background here in Philadelphia, working at TV stations over a decade ago and watching the digital transformation. This is not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. So. Folks that are, you know, heading this off. I worked for one company and they were having growth on the linear cable side. Fantastic for them. That won't last forever. The the pipes are changing. It's a lot of the same thing as programmatic, right? People were talking about, oh, programmatic is going to take jobs. No, it's not. There's, there's, if anything, it just creates better jobs and, <laughs> and more intelligence in the space, right? And, but, but that was a big, you know, scary thing before. I think with COVID and the pandemic, we've gotten over that hump and now everyone's trying to figure out how do we scale and, Look, I I still have Comcast. I, I love the Xfinity cable, but they also dropped me in, uh, you know, Netflix for free and all the different apps. And they allowed me to, they allow me as a gateway to get to everything I need to get to on my one device. That's what we're looking at. We're not looking, you know, it's just going. The pipes are shifting. Let's you know, let's get you know, our content signals are only going to help that. And uh, I think CTV, you know, figure it out now because it's not going anywhere. Yeah, but still like SEO or email marketing, still important for content creators. And uh, what, where do you think they should, why do you think they should still keep it as a, one of the tool? Well, I, again, that, I'm looking at this, I, I'm speaking in a vacuum, but you know, if you're looking mm-hmm. at your marketing mix and you're a content creator, um, I think it just depends on what facet, facet you're in. Um, as far as, you know, a lot of times I'm working with broadcasters that are shifting to, to streaming. I'm working with uh, content owners that are trying to get their content exposed and they want to create channels around it, right? Uh, work very closely with the guys at Synodyme. They've got multiple channels. They wanted to, you know, Bob Ross is a distributed channel. How do you get, you know, that type of content out there? I think if you're looking at it from more of an online video aspect, you know, there's, Again, you're trying to drive eyeballs to websites versus your, you know, and then how do you get into the streams? I think you got to look at, you know, can can your content be scheduled? This is just a personal anecdote. I won't speak for Iris on this one, but uh, I've talked to folks about this. If you have your own content and you've got enough of a library, your, your distribution points are, are web, which, you know, what YouTube, Vimeo, whatever, right? If you, if you want to get distributed, it's not that hard, right? Like cable, linear, linear ca- cable channels are, that's like a whole infrastructure. I could call, if I had a library of content, I could go call up an Amagi, an Oterra, a Whirl, uh, Frequency, any of these guys to help me get, you know, to help if, if see, have a CMS and then how uh, get scheduled, depending on the conversation, and get it distributed, right? And there's different models around that. Um, and it's a highly, uh, and, uh, one of my favorite areas. I know we're getting to time, but you know, I think you you have to look at all those other aspects to get eyeballs to your current areas, but, you know, like the web, but 
if you have a lot large of a not large enough library, you want to be looking at how you're going to get that scheduled out to these different uh, electronic program guides and so forth. Um, or even how do you test? You know, a lot of those guys, they have a lot of anecdotes. I won't speak to all that. I dabble, but I, I won't speak to all of it. I think CTV, again, if you have a large enough library, um, it's it's worth, uh, you know, diving into. Couldn't be cheaper yeah. or easier than, than, than ever. I mean, getting a linear channel stood up, I mean, that's, you know, it's apples and giraffes, as I, as I say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alexei, and uh, for you, what would you recommend for our content creators who are approaching that space and that topic? Uh, what marketing research should be or can be done to help them, um, you know, kind of, kind of feel better in the space and make sure they grow uh, and ROI grows and they use the right targeting and they leverage this targeting? Sorry. I think yeah, I think it's the best way is uh, to do research about your audience first of all because it's uh, um, the the the, uh, the more you know, the more effective you can create your content, distribute your content, and it's all about your audience. Uh, and uh, in terms of um, like um, classical market research, in terms of uh, uh, using AI system that helps you to um, um, like uh, use this data and. Uh, uh, and, uh, it's very really important, uh, like I uh, um, not only have this data but use it yeah, and see all the insights and uh, um, it's, um, do uh, as much as you can. You know, it's better to prepare your, uh, yourself, your content, uh, for your audience, and then launch, then launch and don't uh, like receive any results. So it's all about smart decisions. And uh, I think there is plenty of companies that can help uh, and uh, plenty of solutions, but also it's all about AI and uh, um, in, in this collaboration of uh, how you analyze your audience, how you know them and how you hit them in the right way. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, just to sum up, I wanted to say, uh, you know, more for our audience that CTV, like I was saying before, I think it's uh, it's going to bring in an endless opportunity for targeting, even though we're going, you know, we're not going to have cookies anymore soon, but the contextual advertising targeting is it's going to take so much space, especially when you apply artificial intelligence to it. So everyone's going to take advantage of it and leverage it to their uh, advantage because it's just going to bring so much more information uh, and opportunities for content creator to maybe uh, take closer attention, uh, you know, pay closer attention to signals and uh, really look at what your audience wants uh, and researching your demand and potentially even project, okay, how my content can be useful in terms of advertising, how I can monetize it better way, even before you create the content. So I think that was really, really helpful. Uh, thank you very much for attending um, and answering my question. I'm sure it's going to be helpful. If you have any questions, um, I will pass it after the webinar. So maybe you can help um, our audience to understand better something. So I'll let you know if we have any questions. Uh, and yeah, for now, thank you very much again for attending. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers, and, everyone. Uh, have a good one. Yep. Have a great have a great day, guys.